Hi, Scott Whitley here, and welcome to episode two of Learn Piccolo Bass. In this video, I'll give you some practical things you can try out if you're new to the concept, and how to start improvising and creating your own melodies. Be sure to stick around for an extra bonus tip on practicing scales later in the video. And as if that wasn't good enough, towards the end of the video, I'm going to be giving away a brand new set of GHS piccolo bass strings and more. So without further ado, roll that intro. That short clip was taken from my new single, Trust In Me. The link's on the screen now if you want to check it out. And what you were listening to there was the piccolo bass solo from that tune. I actually played it on this very bass. And hopefully that demonstrates how well the piccolo bass sits in a band or a, an ensemble setting along with another bass player. In just a moment, I'm going to show you some really fun and practical things you can try on your own piccolo bass, which will help maximise your enjoyment and your progress on the instrument. By the way, if we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley and I regularly produce content like this to help you become a better bass player. So please hit like, click subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I make a new video. In this lesson, I'm going to assume that you've either got your piccolo bass strung up and ready to go, or you at least understand how it works. But if you haven't, or you don't know what piccolo bass is already, it might be an idea to check out lesson one. Link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below. And in that lesson, I give you all the information you need to know about how to get started on piccolo bass. The first thing that you really need to take on board is that the piccolo bass isn't really in the bass register anymore. Rather, it's now occupying the same kind of sonic space as an electric guitar, a banjo, the human voice, a tenor or an alto sax, that kind of thing. And with that in mind, the four most popular ways that I see to kind of capitalise on that are number one, playing as part of an ensemble or a band, or playing along with a backing track. This is the way I like to use piccolo bass. I love the idea of playing guitar and I can hear parts in my head, but unfortunately my guitar skills are kind of crap, they're even worse than my bass skills. But piccolo bass allows me to fulfil that role with my existing skill set and muscle memory. But for me, it's even more than that. I absolutely love the tone that you can get out of a piccolo bass. And in many ways, I think you'll find more of my own musical voice when I'm playing piccolo bass than anywhere else. The second way you can capitalize on being in this kind of higher solo register is to create and play solo arrangements specifically written for the piccolo bass. This isn't something I've done a lot of, even on regular bass, I very rarely written pieces that are just for the solo bass. I always kind of like to play with other instruments. But guys like Xander Zahn and Charles Bertine are like incredible at doing this kind of thing. I'll put links to both those guys in the description below. Both of them make beautiful music on the instrument. And again, it's got this kind of ethereal sound. It sounds very different to an electric guitar and they're approaching it very differently as well. Here's a third way you can really capitalize on this higher register. Use the instrument as a learning tool. You can much more easily and clearly hear harmony and melody in this register. And this will help you progress much faster with your practical understanding of harmony and theory. And then you can instantly take all that new understanding and apply that to your regular bass playing. And finally, number four on my list, 
Piccolo bass is a great way to put down musical ideas such as melodies and chords and rhythm parts. For example, that might be an easy way for you to put a demo together for a band you're playing so you can kind of suggest what you want the guitar player to play or the keyboard player. And again, this is all using techniques that you already know. We're going to look at number one here, which is playing with an ensemble or a backing track. Quick tip, there are tons of backing tracks to be found here on YouTube. Just remember not to search for bass backing tracks when you're playing piccolo bass because you'll need the bass to be there on the track while you play in the higher registers. But to get you started, I've created a backing track for this lesson. You can download it, the link is on the screen now, also in the description below. The track is built over the chords A minor 7, D minor 7 and E minor 7. And this sequence repeats throughout the entire piece. I'm actually hearing this as chord 6, 2 and 3 in the key of C major, which means the C major scale or the A natural minor scale, the same series of notes, will work throughout the entire piece. Don't worry if that makes no sense at all, I'll talk you through what to play. The root notes of the three chords that we're going to play over are A, D, and E. And if we were playing regular bass, those are the three notes we'd really want to focus on. But we're playing piccolo bass today, so that's the job of the bass player on the track. Wonder who that might be. Instead, we're going to be using the natural minor scale, and that sounds like this. This is how you play it. First, we play frets 5, 7 and 8 on the E string. Then we play frets 5, 7 and 8 on the A string. And finally, frets 5 and 7 on the D string. Let's play that together. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's do it again. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's play that descending. So that's frets seven and five on the D string. Frets eight, seven, and five on the A string. And frets 8, 7, and 5 on the E string. Let's play that a couple of times together. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we're going to stitch those together, so we're going to play the scale ascending and descending. And we're going to play the highest note twice. By the way, the notation for this is available as a download. The link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below the video. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And descending. We play the bottom note twice. So if that's the first time you've played this scale, you might want to pause the video and then kind of really get that up to speed, play it up and down a lot of times to get really comfortable with it, and then come back and we'll move on. Once you've got that scale really locked under your fingers, you can play some really lovely things over the backing track. It's really important to learn it as a shape and get it really locked into your muscle memory. Let me try and show you a couple of examples of what you can do with it when you get really comfortable with it. To get you started, we're going to play the whole scale, ascending and then descending, really slowly, kind of half time, over the backing track. I'll count us in, but if you want to sit out the first couple just to see what I'm doing and get used to it, that's absolutely fine. So with that being said, here we go.
So we're gonna be going like bum, 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 that sort of speed, okay? Nice and slow. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. If you want to rewind that and try it again, or if you want to download the backing track and play it along with that and then carry on from there, that's absolutely cool. But just get comfortable at that speed. And as you go, a few things to bear in mind. Try and keep the notes nice and long. So let the notes run into each other as much as you can. So you're kind of switching notes and plucking at the same time rather than doing this. Obviously that's got its value, but for now, Try and keep the notes nice and long, and legato, all right? Also, experiment with playing hard and soft. I was playing hard a lot there, because I like that tone, you know. Try playing soft as well. And then hard. going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to double up the speed that we're playing it so that was kind of like half time we were playing this now we're going to play that speed so if you need to you know stop and practice and build up to that speed and as soon as you're ready let's give it a go you play that through with the track a bunch of times just like that just up and down to really lock it into your muscle memory and once you've got the scale really locked under your fingers i encourage you to jump in and have a go at improvising with it if you've never done this kind of thing before don't worry be brave and just go for it start out by picking random notes in random orders from the scale and just seeing or hearing what happens you can choose to play one note and hold it for a long time You could play one note several times in a row. Or just go completely random. The 
possibilities and combinations are pretty much endless, so just let your ears be the guide. If you don't like the sound of something you play, try altering it and see if that works. In the words of Billy Sheehan, if it sounds good, it is good. And if you want to take this idea a little further, there's a link on the screen now. That'll take you to a video I made earlier that'll help you progress a lot more quickly with this stuff. And the PDF worksheet that I've put together for this video, link in the description below, contains a few sample licks I've put together for you that you can use over the backing track. In a moment, I'll give you the chance to win one of three prizes, including a brand new set of GHS piccolo bass strings. But first, as promised, here's a bonus tip to help you practice scales. Scales are the backbone of the music we play, even if you don't realise it. But often, people don't know how to practice them, other than ascending and descending in a loop over and over again. And whilst that's really important and beneficial, there are a ton of things that can be done to make scale practice more entertaining, more challenging, and most importantly, far more rewarding. With that being said, here are a couple of ideas to get you started. By the way, this can be applied to any scale. So if you already know some scales, you've got a head start and you can start using this stuff right away. Start with the basics and play the scale ascending and descending over one octave in one position. Now I know this is what we just talked about, but we're going to do things a little differently. The first thing we're going to do differently is use a drum machine every single time we practice them. Start slowly and build up speed gradually. And when I say slowly, I mean slowly. For example, this is 40 BPM. One, two, three, four. Even though you might be able to physically play the scale faster than that, it's really important to start very, very slowly and lock in completely with the drums. Make sure your timing is absolutely perfect. Try and play those notes very legato so they flow into each other. And only when you've got that absolutely nailed should you increase the tempo. Work that through, maybe adding 10 BPM at a time to the tempo until you reach the point where you know you're starting to fluff it and you're not playing it very well. Make a note of that tempo, and then the next time you come to practice, you've got a target that you want to try and exceed. Once you're comfortable playing that scale in one position, it's time to start moving it up and down the neck. And what I recommend you do here is find the lowest position that you can play that scale in. So for a major scale, that's F sharp. And for that particular scale I was playing with, that would be the second fret on the E string. And then what we do is slow the drum machine back down again and we play the entire scale in this position. Then we move up one fret. And then one more fret more. And this is all in time with the drum machine. And we keep doing that until we can't get any higher. There's going to come a point on the neck where you either run out of frets or you can't fret it. Go as high as you can and then work your way all the way back down to here. And in doing so much repetition and making these micro adjustments as you go from wider frets to narrower frets, you're locking that position of the major scale, the feel of it, into your muscle memory. And down the line, that's going to reward you in so many ways. The next thing I recommend you do is play the scales sequentially. And what I mean by that is, instead of playing the scale in its entirety, we'll perhaps play the first three notes of the scale, and then the second three notes of the scale, and then the third three notes, and so on, the fourth three notes, fifth three notes, sounds like this. And then you can learn that descending. And it's the same drill. We slow the drum machine right down. We play that in this position. And then we move it up one and up one and up one. And we play in every position until we get as high as we can go. And then we come all the way back down. Take a little rest. Turn the BPM up. And then do it all again. And already, that's much more interesting. It sounds much more musical than just playing the scale ascending and descending. Once you've got that on your fingers, you can try four notes at a time, five notes at a time, or even more. And don't forget, all these exercises are included in the PDF worksheet that goes with this video. The link is in the description below. And finally, another great way to practice scales is to use intervallic exercises. So, for example, we might play the first note and then the third note. 
and then the second note and the fourth note and then the third and the fifth so we're kind of spidering you know up the scale like this let me play that for you sounds like this and descending Same drill exactly, start with the drum machine slowly, play it in one position until you get used to it and it's under your fingers, and then start low down the neck and play every single position you can until you reach the top and then come all the way back. And then have a rest, increase the tempo on the drum machine, and then do it all again. Right, just before we go, it's competition time. Hooray! Well done to the winners of the last competition who are Sean P. Bass, Walter Mitty and Davey Rivers. Well done. This week, we've got a signed copy of my new CD, a signed copy of my limited edition blue vinyl single, and a brand new set of GHS piccolo bass strings. All you need to do to enter is type hashtag piccolo bass, all one word, in the comments below, and let me know your thoughts on piccolo bass. It doesn't have to be long, it can be just a few words, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the instrument. Do you like the sound of it? Do you think it's a nonsense instrument? Do you see the value in it? Perhaps you've played piccolo bass a long time yourself, and if so, I'd love to hear your experiences with it. Any comments at all are appreciated. Let's get some conversation going on piccolo bass. But don't forget, if you want to get added into the draw, you must include hashtag piccolo bass, all one word. The winners will be announced in next week's video, which comes out on Sunday the 13th of June at 4pm UK time. So look out for that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to download the backing track, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.